in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed your house your home we welcome you lord we welcome you this is your house your home we welcome you today this is your Personalize it. I am your house. I am your house. Your home. I welcome you. Lord, I welcome you. And I'm your house. I'm your home. I welcome you. Father, our hearts are open tonight. We thank you for the privilege to be part of the amazing Kingdom Life Summit. Lord, we thank you for Reverend Dr. Kunat. We thank you for the leadership of this great assembly. Thank you for the honor of bringing your word to your people. Our hearts are open tonight. Speak, O oh God, and change our lives. Speak and heal our bodies. Speak and change our minds. Speak and bring deliverance. Speak and bring hope and life. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. Please be seated. Let me again honor our Father, Reverend Dr. Kunat. Thank you so much. It is truly an honor to bring the word of the Lord. We started in the morning for those of us who were not able to make it in the morning. May I just do a very quick recap. It was um, a time of sober reflection, reflecting on our lives and we discussed the vital signs of spiritual retrogression. It was an attempt to help us understand it was a, a diagnosis to help us know if our spiritual states and our spiritual health is intact. And we considered a few signs the same way the doctor would come and take the vital signs of a patient to be able to ascertain the level of health and vitality of such a patient. We discussed about five of them. Let me just run through it just for a recap before we begin tonight's teaching number one that the first vital sign that shows spiritual retrogression that means if and when you see these signs in your life they are a cause for concern they call for an immediate spiritual response number one is when there is a significant deviation from your love for God and the things of God the moment there is a significant deviation from your love for God and the things of God that is a vital sign number one that something is wrong number two self-centered living as against Christ-centered living that means when your life becomes 
all about you the desire for self-glorification not just to see Jesus exalted in and through your life that is a sign number two that your life might be suffering spiritual retrogression number three consistent ever increasing compromise of your values and godly standards the moment you find out that there is a consistent ever increasing compromise of your values and your godly standards it is it is it is one of the most classic signs that something is wrong with your spiritual life number four a decline in your spiritual convictions the moment you find out that the things that gave you boldness and confidence about God and the things of God now become a thing of shame and embarrassment fasting prayer your time with God your passion for the things of God evangelism you find out that you now join people to even mock these spiritual experiences as though they were powerless that is a sign of spiritual decadence the fifth and the last sign we considered in the morning is decline in passion for the house of God there is a relationship between your passion and your love for the house of God and your spiritual health it's a fact that if something is wrong with your spiritual life it will affect your passion for the house of God I did observe in the morning that many a times you find out that there are believers who come to church and after 10 minutes 15 minutes 30 minutes they are already exhausted they are tired sleepy and do not even want to pay attention as though the, the service were a stretch that were inconveniencing them and after service they will stand behind a vehicle and talk for two hours standing and yet not be tired so you see that it, it was an attack to stop you from receiving the word and to stop your growth these five signs we examined in the morning are classic signs that that whoever becomes a victim of some or more of these signs and if we're to be honest with ourselves at one point or the other everybody will face the challenge of one or more of these signs and so uh, the, the meeting in the morning was not just a meeting for a few group of people it was a challenge to everyone who is serious about God and intends to be serious or remain serious to cry before the Lord and ask for help some of us from the discussion in the morning we found out that based on the rating it was five over five everything was wrong with our spiritual lives and it was a call for prayer for repentance for brokenness a few of us saw one or more areas that would need to look at and um, for those of us who could not make it I'm sure that you do well to get access to the teachings and listen again conferences like this are not just designed to be a religious program honoring a calendar program it's supposed to be a meeting that impacts our spiritual lives maximally are we together praise the name of the Lord and so continuing from our discussion in the morning I want to teach and I'm trusting like I promised in the morning that would we'll spare a few minutes to be able to pray and we trust that God would grant us the privilege to experience his power and his grace in our midst that those who have come with burdens and yokes of all sorts that God will give us a visitation tonight in Jesus name I am a believer and a man of God that is convinced that every time people show up before the God of heaven if it is before the God of the Bible we must be able to receive the full package of everything in store for us that means we must have an encounter with Jesus the son of the living God we must be transformed by the power of the word that comes to us we must also be able to enjoy the the power of God in and through our lives to heal to deliver to set free there's no point coming to talk about a great and powerful Jesus and then living back with sicknesses living back with burdens living back with yokes if he's the God of the Bible he would not just leave you transformed he will also insist that everything that does not represent him in your life that there must be a separation of it and I'm praying for somebody already this night that in the name of Jesus everything that is Antichrist 
working in your life working in your body at the instance of the word of god it must give way once and for all tonight in the name of jesus christ second peter chapter 3 from verse 17 and 18 second peter will begin for tonight chapter 3 from verse 17 and 18 therefore this is amplified let me warn you beloved knowing these things beforehand it says be on your guard so that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men who distort doctrine and fall from your own steadfastness of mind knowledge truth and faith verse 18 it says but grow spiritually mature in the grace and knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ it's an instruction is an admonition to him be the glory honor majesty splendor both now and to the day of eternity amen so he's forewarning the people and saying be careful there are unprincipled men who will come and thwart doctrine and by giving them a listening ear they will corrupt your own spiritual health he's warning them and he's saying rather contend for spiritual growth he says to grow and become spiritually mature in the grace and the knowledge of our lord jesus christ so i want to teach very briefly on spiritual maturity spiritual maturity haven't examined the vital signs that make for spiritual retrogression we must then be able to examine the ways of the kingdom that makes for maturity and stature in the kingdom hallelujah the bible clearly lets us know that believers can and should grow that means when a believer now the foundation please let me your attention the foundation of the believers journey doctrinally speaking based on the truth revealed in scripture the foundation of a believer's journey is his encounter with jesus christ do we agree you would think these things are very simple you remember this is a kingdom life conference so it is it is supposed to mature the understanding of believers you will be amazed to know how many believers cannot give you the sequence and the protocol of the growth of the believer they do not know from what step to what step the foundation doctrinally speaking of the believers experience begins with his or her encounter with jesus christ that means it does not matter how many years you are around church it does not even matter what role and what function you play according to the authority of scripture if you have not encountered jesus the son of the living god then you have not begun your spiritual experience you can be existing but not alive you are only alive if and when the life of christ is manifest within you do we agree on that jesus was speaking to nicodemus in john chapter 3 and the discourse span down to 15 and then 16 that we know as a popular scripture it says for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son now we know from scripture that it's not just jesus is not only he's not his one and only begotten son alone we have become the begotten too so jesus has now become the firstborn among we the begotten are we learning now so but at the time this was written his one and only begotten son he says that whosoever so this is a privilege that is not just for pastors regardless region he said whosoever shall believe in him that that individual would not perish but have life eternal john again in his epistle was teaching us and he says this is the record that god had given us eternal life he says but this life is in his son are we bible students he says so that he that had the son had life that means you cannot assume you have the life of god without an encounter with the son of god are we together say for instance i have a hundred dollar bill in my pocket and i'm telling you the only way to access this hundred dollar bill is to meet me is that true you cannot claim to be in possession of that hundred dollar bill if you have not met me 
there are many people who have not met Jesus and yet they claim to have the life of God the Bible says the administration of eternal life was so structured that until you encounter the Son before you have that life no assumptions the reason why we have to examine this is because the more you have people in church who have not met Jesus the more will not be free from trouble are we together now so in as much as everybody is welcome you come as you are but you don't stay as you are you come as you are with an intention to meet Jesus the son of the living God so that your salvation experience would begin many times you have respectfully speaking churches and houses of worship full of people who are far I'm not just talking of people who are backsliding people who have never even met Jesus sadly some of them are in committees sadly some of them are in very very sensitive positions within the house of god and so you find out that the holy spirit cannot move through these people to bring policies and things that bring honor to the name of the lord this is not an issue of backsliding this is not even an issue of lack of renewal it is that you have not encountered the son of god a man and a woman who has not encountered the son of god every negative thing is possible because you are helplessly under the influence of demons so even if by your personality you are a good person you are still a risk because demons can have access to you and cause mayhem that you yourself will later regret it matters that people are saved it is not just adding to the salvation figures of the church it is the only act of safety there is no guarantee over any man who is not saved are we together so the foundation of the believer's journey must start not with longevity of church attendance you would think that many people feel that haven't been 10 years in church there are many young people who assume that they are saved simply because they were born by christian parents and passed through the regular sunday school system and by reason of consistency they are naturally elected to be leaders or escorts and they gravitate into leadership there are no assumptions with jesus are we learning many of us if i presume have passed through some sort of tertiary system of education in every institution did you know that there are people who buy and sell within the campus and yet they are not students some of them were born there they've been there for many years they can tell you everything they can show you when you come in as a new student they can direct you to every faculty but that does not mean they are professors just because they've been around the institution does not automatically impart a degree or a master's or a phd on them there is a system that they must pass through so there is a deception that is destroying people in the church and let me challenge us respectfully speaking these are the seasons where you need to examine everybody under your care to verify whether they are saved don't assume your children are saved are they saved indeed don't assume your spouse is saved are they saved indeed don't assume the leaders in a church are saved are they saved indeed are we learning yes. so the believers journey starts with the encounter with Jesus the son of the living God encounter with angels does not bring salvation hello please look up please look up we have to verify who you see when it has to do with salvation it is the office of the christ according to the authority of scripture you have to encounter christ in as much as the holy spirit according to the integrity of scripture the holy spirit is the one who comes to be the manifestation of the presence of jesus in your life but you don't give your life to the holy spirit you give your life to jesus the son of the living god this is what the bible teaches there are many many if these things are not corrected we will be in trouble in the next few years to come because there are people who have encountered angels genuinely and they believe they are saved just because they met angels it is not in the office of angels to give you salvation 
because you have an encounter with heaven or hell congratulations for your encounter but it does not mean you are saved a good christian name is not equal to salvation a good voice and intelligence you went through the sunday school system very well you can quote scripture it does not equal salvation there are situations in our lives and in the house of god that does not require counseling it does not require um, committees to meet and help people many people have just not met jesus it's as simple and as honest as that you may have heard me say it that the greatest need of an unbeliever is not counseling the greatest need of an unbeliever is not rehabilitation the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation it's as simple as that no matter what you give an unbeliever no matter how well meaning you are if salvation does not become the hallmark of your gift to him you did not help him are we blessed so let's move past the salvation experience now now by the privilege of god's grace you have encountered jesus genuinely and based on the authority of scripture the bible says if you believe in him remember the protocol for salvation is in romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 romans 10 from verse 8 to 10 it says the word is near you in your heart and in your mouth even the word of faith that we preach is that true that if you confess jesus christ as your lord and you believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead the bible says you shall be saved so there's no confusion as to how we are saved that salvation is a product of the heart and the lips not the heart alone the heart first but then the lips it says for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and then it says with the mouth confession is made unto salvation praise the name of the lord so if and when a believer is saved that is wonderful but then that also creates a new kind of problem and we have a lot of this also in the house of god remaining at the gates of the kingdom without any potential for growth now it will be unfair for any parent to give birth to a child imagine a mother who gives birth to a child and after two hours the woman is impatient with the baby's crying and not walking and begins to flog that baby and says look i've given you two hours it's more than enough time to start working that's too early is that true but then the same woman after two years three years if that baby is not walking and not talking that is no longer a, an issue of childishness that becomes a health concern am i right on that so if you get saved that is not all to your christian experience that is only the foundation of the journey unfortunately many believers get satisfied with just the encounter with jesus the son of the living god and they remain there with no intention and no press for growth and maturity i will never be i'll never be satisfied so here i am fill me up with your presence i will never be i'll never be satisfied so here i am fill me up with your presence you see when the believer listen to me the moment you get saved there are two principal spiritual um, platforms that make for your growth and maturity number one is the ministry of the holy spirit number two is the ministry of the word according to the authority of scripture these are the two principal platforms that now begin to guide and usher you to growth and maturity when you encounter jesus the son of the living god your next most important encounter is the ministry of the holy spirit 
remember jesus was teaching about the holy spirit and here's what he had to say i have many things to tell you he said but ye cannot bear them now he said how be it when he the spirit of truth is come that he will guide you into all truth are we believers yeah that he will guide you into all truth the holy spirit's assignment is to bring you into an experiential um, understanding of this life you have now received and then the ministry of the word the word of god is very powerful because captured in the word is the a revelation of god's promises you may have heard me teach captured in the word is a compendium of god's principles the modus operandi of the kingdom every kingdom every organization every territory has rules of engagement they have a modus operandi now you are in the kingdom you have to begin to learn the ways of god is that true you learn how god prospers you learn how people grow you learn how god restores you learn how to relate with an invisible god in heaven how do i relate with a god in heaven who i cannot see with my optical eyes yet the bible tells me he's real i must now learn the ways of faith hebrews 11 and verse 6 it says without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh unto god he must believe that number one he exists he is and then number two that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him is that true now the assignment of what we call the fivefold ministry according to ephesians chapter 4 when you read from verse 16 down you know to 20 and all of that talking about jesus going to hades the place of the dead and then the bible says he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men the gifts are not talents the gifts are men that he gave to men are we together now the men he gave to men are apostles and prophets and evangelists is that true and pastors and teachers why did he give them clearly stated in scripture for the equipping the perfecting of the saints the word perfection there means the maturing of the saints so these gifts that we call pastors or preachers in partnership with the holy spirit and in partnership with the word of god this tripartite formation is god's recommended strategy for the growth and the maturity of the believer jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 please give it to us media jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 here's what it says it says and i will give you shepherds or pastors after my own heart and they will please give us kjv can we have king james I will give you pastors after my heart and he says that they will feed you king james kjv with knowledge and understanding so the primary assignment of a man of god with respect to the congregation of god's people is to feed you with knowledge and with understanding to feed you with knowledge and with understanding let me recap again so that you follow closely that when you encounter jesus christ the next step is your encounter with the holy spirit your encounter with the word of god and then your encounter with a teaching priest now please listen carefully it is it is almost impossible to grow thoroughly in isolation god himself designed the system that every believer should be planted within a spiritual fold for the purpose of maturity and growth the purpose of the church is not just to come and receive miracles it is one of the things that happen in church but the primary assignment of the church is that the church is god's authorized platform for the growth and the maturity of the believer hallelujah the ministry of the holy spirit the ministry of the word and the ministry of the teaching priest when god brings you to a point where he connects you 
to a man of God who loves Jesus and can teach you the ways of God he connects you with the Word of God for your personal edification he connects you with the ministry of the Holy Spirit now your journey to spiritual growth and maturity can begin properly let me tell you any believer who violates this pattern there will be a side effect in their growth are we together now so you find out that there are believers who get saved genuinely saved but because they never had the opportunity to be mentored their spiritual pathway is not methodical there is just a random learning of anything and how many of you agree with me that it is not just truth that blesses it is truth that is sequentially arranged the bible tells us that it is arranged line upon line and precepts upon precepts i give you an example please look up there are certain things a believer should know before learning about prosperity there are certain things a believer should know before learning about demons before learning about spiritual warfare if you don't know who you are in christ and you do not understand the reality of your oneness with christ and your polit your your positional advantage learning about demons will only the fear that comes as a result of not knowing who you are will open the gate for demons to oppress you are you seeing that now so this is the danger of believers trying to grow on their own can i tell you hear me you can know god and press into god but you cannot grow on your own uh -uh. when jesus was 12 years as the word of god he was in the temple he was not wasting his time there as the word of god samuel who became one of the greatest prophets in the bible his greatness was tied to the methodical mentorship of eli that even in his backsliding state eli was still useful to samuel even though his eyes was dim but it was still the voice of eli god used to call samuel our world today and the church is full of a lot of pride there are many young people who believe look i have more revelation than my pastor i have more knowledge and sometimes they may be right maybe because of the avenues they have exposed themselves to they may seem to have had some more things so they look at the man of god and say this man of god what else can i learn from you oh dear god will always use the voice of eli to call samuel so if you neglect the voice of eli you will not hear god you would think god will bypass eli simply because he wants to do something great with samuel that's the reason why you have these shades of imbalances in our spiritual growth people with no character but high level anointing or people with character and no grace no power whatsoever all of these imbalances were supposed to be a product how many of you have seen young people who learned how to drive by themselves most often than not there are mistakes they will make sooner or later just because you can move a car well and a car has not hit you yet does not mean you are doing the right thing you can be making a mistake for 10 years and the day that trailer will hit you it will remind you it's like a backlog of your mistakes for 10 years accumulated in one accident is that true spiritual maturity even though paul met with jesus christ on his way to damascus you would think that after his encounter with jesus christ he should not need anybody again jesus himself referred him to the house of judas to stay there and Ananias came and said jesus whom you saw is the same one who sent me and he performed two miracles in the life of the great apostle paul number one the opening of his eyes number two the infilling with the holy spirit the man who became the greatest apostle hallelujah now when you encounter the holy spirit the word of god and a teaching priest a teaching priest also doubles as a spiritual family 
did you know that respectfully speaking most of the wayward troublemakers within society usually their trouble starts because they are not part of a healthy family are we in agreement on that when a young boy leaves anyhow returns home anytime he wants wakes up anytime he can be under the bridge today in a river tomorrow in one state tomorrow he can wake up by nine and begin a journey no supervision no nothing usually it would take the grace of god for that person to be a useful person this is how it is spiritually that every believer must be part of a larger spiritual fold to help in your building to help in your empowerment and to help you love Jesus let's talk about transformation that is the next major junction in the believers life so we have the new birth experience where you start with Jesus and then your encounter with the Holy Spirit the Word of God and the teaching priest only begins the next phase is called transformation please write it down transformation what is transformation transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience please write it down yes you says he differed not from a slave even though he be lord of all an heir one who is a beneficiary of an inheritance but for as long as there is no growth the bible says he he there is no difference between his experience and the one who is a child so when you encounter jesus the next major assignment in your life is transformation let me tell you this transformation is a very long journey it's not something that happens in one year because transformation demands that there be an editing of your value system an editing of the information some of them have become the fabric of your living until that time it is going to be a difficult thing for you to declare your disloyalty to a mindset you've held all your life transformation is one of the most difficult journeys of the holy spirit in the life of a believer because he will not force you to change herein lies the differences in the experience of believers who have met the same god and yet their experiences seem to be very different it is the degree of transformation romans chapter 12 from verse 1 it says i beseech you brethren by the mercies of god that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto god holy and acceptable he calls it your reasonable act of worship verse 2 says and do not be conformed to this world the word world is the greek word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with this age listen to me Many of us come from different families. Many of us come from different cultural and sociological contexts. And I will tell you the truth. There are many belief systems that we have imbibed, either based on our experiences, our levels of exposure, our associations, our, you know, the history, the antecedents over our lives. By the time you become an adult in this kingdom and today's world, you would have accumulated a backlog of several experiences. And many of them become the influencers of our belief system. Unfortunately, when God calls you as you are, he cannot use you as you are. You come as you are, but you are not used as you are. The difficulty in submitting our mindsets 
to be transformed by the power of the word and the power of the holy spirit this is where the imminent defeat of many believers lie it is the reason why we read one thing in the bible and yet our lives and our experiences cannot capture in reality the victory that the bible says has been given to the believer in christ ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 please write it down let me quote it very quickly for time's sake it says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them psalms 82 from verse 5 to 7 they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high verse 7 says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes that means a possibility exists that i am genuinely saved i have met the god of the bible and yet my christian experience becomes a plethora of defeat after defeat it does not mean my salvation was not genuine it means that this, you see this kingdom is a kingdom that rises your your victory in this kingdom is knowledge dependent it takes light to rise and to excel isaiah 60 and verse 1 arise shine it says for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you amplified of the same scripture says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new light it is possible to live a defeated life very defeated life more defeated than a sincere unbeliever simply because we have not allowed the transforming power of the holy spirit to build us are we learning yes this is why we come to church this is why we engage with the word and the ministry of the holy spirit line upon line precept upon precepts now watch this this is the assignment of the teaching priest with respect to our growth and maturity the man of God is mandated with the spiritual responsibility to provide mentorship, to provide doctrinal. Listen carefully. The primary tool for discipleship is a term that we so embrace, but many in many Christian circles, we do not even understand the scope of discipleship. Discipleship is how believers become matured. What is discipleship? It's not just the communication of the doctrine of a sect discipleship is the platform that gives you an opportunity to learn doctrine in a structured manner discipleship a platform that gives you an opportunity to learn doctrine in a structured manner the word doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina it means a a specific body of truth intended to make an individual become something exact doctrine an authorized body of truth that has been vetted and approved are we learning so the teaching priest now begins to expose you to the various facets of the kingdom life for instance now you begin to learn about the prayer ministry for instance you begin to learn about the power of the word of God in your your living and your excelling that man in this kingdom does not live by bread alone but by, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God is that true you now begin to learn on the economic system of the kingdom that God is a benevolent God is a benevolent king and he desires to prosper you but here is the way you prosper God's way now he begins to teach you your system of defense theologically speaking the entire book of Ephesians six chapters it it gives the most balanced theological presentation of the entire journey of the believer chapters one and two begins 
by helping you understand your union with Christ and your positional advantage by reason of being in Christ it is there you find how that you have been exalted with Christ above thrones dominions and every name that is named so the goal is to help you understand who you are in Christ is that true the implication of your being one with Christ and then it goes further to teach you how to walk a life that is worthy of your calling then it now lets you know that you are not alone in this system there is an adversary that is determined to thwart the purposes of God in your life if allowed he now begins to teach you that there is in God's economy there is a provision to ward off the hands of darkness he does not leave you in the dark he lets you know that there are cohorts of darkness that are determined to see that your life does not become an expression of the glory of God now please hear me when a believer let me use please one of this my dear brothers any one of you just come let me use this gentleman for an example I like to teach with illustrations thank you please come watch this let's assume with me that this gentleman say he got born again four or five years ago at the end of five years of your Christian experience you should be able to defend your growth in God that means I should be able to interview this man and say sir tell me what you know about God and tell me what you know about kingdom living if this man cannot defend his staying in church he's been wasting his time and wasting the time of the pastor are you offended can I continue now this man should be able to tell me what he's learned about prayer if I ask him as a five-year-old believer under a methodical spiritual structure that has been communicating doctrine after doctrine what do you know about prayer most believers the answer will be zero what do you know about giving what do you know about God what do you know about man what do you know about success what do you know about Satan what do you know about purpose and your assignment what do you know about destiny what do you know about longevity what do you know about influence what do you know about growth zero this man should be so built that I can refer a new believer to him and never see him again and say follow this man up when you meet a graduate doctor or one who is a consultant you can bring a fresh graduate who is a doctor and literally trust him under the care of that man and know that after three four five years you will meet one who is a a settled and grounded medical practitioner but you do not find this in church now imagine that this man respectfully speaking I now say because you have been in church five years I now make you the pastor of another church you see what I've done as confused as he is with respect to my example now look at the things he does not know so if this man is counseling now what is he going to tell the person pastor there are all kinds of demons disturbing me I go to sleep and I see my grandmother calling me and the man said let's pray that's alright because he does not have the spiritual intelligence to deal with that situation are we together now this is the man who is going to train the leaders in that church he will only give them from the lens of his ignorance or his limited knowledge so you should be able to tell me what you know about prayer listen do you know when you encounter the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and you seek to be methodically mentored with 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 precision you can hear people talk and with the precision of a consultant if I would use that expression you can easily diagnose their spiritual problem in a moment if someone comes and tells you look I don't know what is wrong I don't I don't even have passion for the house of God you should be able to know what is the problem like a doctor is listening to a patient and he's saying look I have I'm running temperature I'm throwing up I'm having cold and the man laughs and says okay that's all right the doctor you don't understand and the man says I know 
can you have that level of precision unfortunately now i'm saying this because this is a kingdom life conference imagine this man as a parent the priest of his home with this level of spiritual confusion daddy i went to sleep and someone slapped me i said don't disturb me that boy is already telling you something that you will you will suffer it yourself too daddy i go to bed and it's like someone is calling me and he says don't disturb me the man is not evil he's just not matured are we together mommy somebody laid her hands on my head in school and from that time i've been having a mysterious headache oh it's all right don't worry god will help you eh? well go and report to your teacher you see this is the way we the, i'm showing you that when there is no spiritual growth it spills over to society it now begins to permeate everywhere imagine this man as a ceo now and his company is going down and he cannot interpret things from the lens of a superior belief system light of the world you step down to my darkness open my eyes let me see that's my prayer lord you're the light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me see will you open my eyes let me see Open my heart Let me know Listen Listen Because of this man's spiritual growth 5,000 people who are under his care in his company Can rise and enjoy the blessings of God Because one person is matured He is not just educated He has spiritual intelligence He can look at a particular staff and know That this staff is not just a poor staff There are powers fighting this one Because he's the one God is raising To bring life to his family And one day he will invite him and say Come to my office And he thinks you are discussing the issue of containers coming And he says listen I'm not just a CEO There is an anointing upon me I am transformed I know the handwriting of Satan There is a lecturer who can look at a student because the lecturer has allowed himself herself to grow you can look at a student and know that this student is not dull the parents may be ignorant but this boy is that the devil is fighting the person come to my office this is not just about repeating this is not about starting again i know what is wrong with you my maturity has diagnosed your situation tell you this when we refuse to grow everybody connected to us suffers the consequences of our spiritual stuntedness the implication is that it does not affect you alone because everybody who is under your care must become a victim of your limitation imagine how many innocent people's destinies have been trapped because of the absence of growth of leaders absence of growth of pastors absence of growth of parents absence of growth of businessmen when you encounter jesus it does not stop there you need transformation now you begin to learn the ways of god for instance the bible says listen very carefully the Bible says, there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and it tends to poverty. Now you come from a family where nobody has risen. If you came from a poor family, don't bring a poor family out of you. If you come from a defeated family, don't bring a defeated family out of you. Become that bridge between the old and the new. You make up your mind like Jesus that I will surrender my life. For the sake of those coming ahead. Is God speaking to someone? 
transformation is a long process because now you begin to learn you are learning the principles of the kingdom listening to tapes do you know transformation is not all up to god it takes discipline to be transformed this is why we need to cast the spirit of laziness from the house of god waiting for the word of god to come and meet you is proof that you are not serious spiritually by the truth it says the market does not come to your house by the truth you wake up in the night lord i thank you i came from a poor family i came from a defeated family i came from a family of idol worship lord this has to end i cannot watch my children i'm not going to be able to give my children an explanation as to why they are inheriting defeat in spite of their education lord let me pay that price even if it means using me as a scapegoat let me go through that once and for all and the spirit of the lord comes to you in response to your hunger call on to me he says and i will answer i will show you great and mighty things that you do not know please hear me an attack on your prayer life an attack on your passion to study the bible is not about westernization is danger being programmed in your future can i tell you this the devil will not attack you immediately he's not stupid he will wait for you to keep going down in ignorance and then destroy all your children anybody who can help you the devil will take them away from you first before he attacks you because if you have helpers too close to you when you attack you can call on them and they will help you so the devil will allow you to be far from everywhere help can be found then one day he will visit you in a way that you cannot imagine someone shout no way shout it again God is for us then what could ever stop us and if our God is with us and if our God is for us then what could ever stop us and if our God is with us can I tell you this Satan is many things but a fool is not one of them I repeat Satan is many things whatever else you call Satan you are right but to call him a fool you will spend your life learning that lesson that is not that foolish Satan has an advantage of age he has been around for a very long time the Bible says to not be ignorant of the devices when it talks about weapons it says they are fashioned no weapon fashion they don't just come to fashion means he studies you he studies your vulnerability that anger that becomes the entrance point he knows that when you are broke you are not a christian again so he will ensure that everything that can give you joy financially goes away so that in that state of pain and frustration here he comes Are you seeing that your anger with your pastor is not just about your pastor it is the devil knowing that there is a message that should be preached in March that your spiritual life depends on he wants to make sure you do not hear that truth so he will use an occasion maybe in your unit or whatever it is an offense and anger you say this church self the way they are and you miss out on an opportunity and start recycling years of pain in your life again is God helping us tonight? Are you seeing the reason why you have to pray for your pastor? Because if the devil attacks him with affliction, it's not just about the man. He's attacking you. It's not him. He knows that if this man is not in the best of health, it has a way of disturbing his focus imagine a man of god who stands on the stage and there's a school fees of 3.5 hanging on him with text messages entering his phone while he's preaching the devil will ensure that his eyes will see one of those text messages as he's quickly turning his points please be reminded that tomorrow by this time if you have not paid your school fees and you see the man scattered on stage you hear anything again he's shouting and you are wondering why he's angry what changed
invited me to come and preach. Are we together? The journey of transformation is a real journey. Can I tell you? You get to a point where you are matured indeed. You know what to do. The moment you see the writings on the wall, your boss looks at you and says, I don't know what is it about you, but I, I am beginning to hate you. You are a matured believer. You know that it's not your boss because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You now go back as a matured believer. You know what to do. You know the power of prayer. You can go and shut your house and from that central control room, you know how to begin to control things. By the next morning, the man is calling you and saying, what did you even say your name is again? You know what you have done. Listen, please sit down. Please take seriously what I'm teaching you. Politicians, unbelievers, they understand this. You reject them and insult them and say, I will not vote them. They don't come to you. They leave you. They know what they need to do. While you are sleeping, they are programming something upon your mind. And to your shock and amazement, you will do things you vowed that you would not do. And they will stand laughing at you and laughing at your lack of growth. As a father when you are matured you come to your house and you find out your wife is sick mysteriously your children are sick mysteriously some business that you put just crashed no this is not just about lack of good decision making skills there is an adversary coming within my space you remove that regalia of being a father and wear your priestly regalia you tell your wife I'm coming while they are sleeping in the night they are hearing the voice of a priest indeed walking around your domain sanitizing that atmosphere because you know what to do listen do you know how proud your children will be as a father sleeping and hearing the voice of a priest indeed you are praying and declaring and as I would always say, I said this many years ago, you walk to their rooms, room by room. As they wake up, you say, no, 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 just lie down. I'm your father. Let me show you how a priest behaves. That boy goes back to school the next day and a missing script of three years is found. The day you are not around, he will do what you always do. That's how to mentor. That's how to train. Don't forget what we are discussing tonight spiritual maturity you are mature to the degree to which you are transformed sustaining superior beliefs that are word compliant hmm. hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button In the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin